song number two there on today's MSI. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Tom this time around, find out what he thought of uh, the track. Tom, song number two? Yeah, um, nicely produced, a lot of interesting things going on. Um, Would have uh, liked to have the pizzicato strings a little less prominent. Um, they were uh, far too busy in places and, and constantly playing. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, then another album track. I, I don't see this as being a single. It's a little too long. Um, but the parts were interesting. I held my interest top to bottom. Um, the mix could have been better, could have been uh, a little bit more punchy, uh, a little bit clearer, um, but you know the style of this type of music calls for lots of delays and stuff, and, and that dulls things down. But uh, overall, uh, you know, I liked it, but um, definitely not a single. And um, a good vocal performance, um, and uh, that about it. All right, I appreciate that, Tom. Thank you so much. Let's find out what Lee thought about this one. Lee, what do you think of song number two? Okay, not not normally a style of music that I'd, I'd spend a lot of time listening to, so uh, apologies if I come out with even more nonsense than usual. However, I found it a very interesting four, four and a half minutes. Um, uh, I thought the intro was a bit too long. I, I, I seem to be always saying things like that, but I thought the vocals should have come in earlier. When they did come in, it was I thought the singing was great. A good sort of pop voice. I, I liked the sound of the vocal. And... Uh, uh, I, I felt that 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 was used well. The harmonies on odd words were good. I liked the way that the the scanning of the vocal changed in the middle eight quite dramatically. I like it. it was it, I was thinking listening to it. So how's he going? Uh, where are they going to go from here? And the vocal that changed quite quite radically. And I, and I liked that as a, as, a, as, a, as a bit of songwriting. I thought that was a nice moment. Um, Lots of sounds. Oh, 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 yeah. The mix, the mix was a bit strange. As I say, those kind of pizzicato strings, as, as Tom said, I, I, I felt they, 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 they were over. It, when they first came in, it was great. They could have dropped back then for me because you kind of knew what they were going to do. And I think that they, they could have still been lowering the mix. You'd have known they were there. Um, Guitar-wise, it's, it's a splendidly mad guitar sound uh, with a, 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 that, that kind of auto panning that runs backwards and forwards, and it's quite fun when they first do it. But three and a half minutes in, you're, you're starting to get cross-eyed. Uh, I certainly was. Um, a little bit annoying, but I could see where it was going. It was kind of fun that it was on there. Br as I say, brilliantly mad guitar sound. When it did come in about best part of two minutes in, it was a nice moment. Um, so, uh, interesting track. Yeah, not uh, album track or whatever, definitely. Uh, and, but I think anybody that rhymes flash with glass, as we say in the south of England, is all right by me. So, uh, <laughs> all, all good stuff. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that, Lee. Thank you. And Ian, uh, what are your thoughts on this track? You know what? I'm a big fan of Chris Cornell, who was the lead singer in, in Audio Slave and Soundgarden. And the last album we done was an album called Scream. And it was produced by a guy called Timberland, who's produced for loads of mm -hmm. top acts. And I, I was, went into this album very intrepidly, thinking, it's Chris Cornell, it's one of my favourite artists, it's going to be a great album. And you could hear the great song in there, but I didn't agree with a single production technique used on that album. It just didn't suit the music. It didn't suit the voice. And this is how this track left me feeling. It was like I was listening to a Chris Cornell track that had been produced by Timbaland, and that's not what I wanted to hear. It is very well done. Don't get me wrong. It's a well-written song. Um, the way it has been produced it has been, is very well done in its own right. I just didn't get on with it. I think there is a much better live-based song with live drums, guitars, uh, proper bass lines going on, and not all these pizzicato strings there. And that song would stand up a lot better on its own in a live environment rather than all the program stuff going on. It was very well done, the way it was done, but it wasn't what I wanted to hear from that song. Um, so it, it kind of left me feeling that... It, Great vocal performance, really well written track. I agree with Tom. It's a strong album album track. It might even make it uh, as a club track the way it's produced. Or actually, you know, as a single, I think. But it just left me feeling a bit cold the way it was produced. Um, you know, it did have a strong sonic palette. It, the vocals were good. I wanted to hear more of them guitars coming in. The, the guitar sound was nice. 
And I thought, you know, any minute now, this song's going like, to really kick up a gear into a sort of a rock electronica sort of thing. And it just didn't go there. And uh, I wanted it to really badly. Too many effects on the vocals. Again, it's so overdone these days. That guy obviously had a good vo- voice. I wanted to hear his voice. And I agree with Lee. The, um, the intro was far too long. Cut that in half, bring that vocal in a lot sooner because it left me guessing too much. I was like, where's this going? What, what's this going to do? And when I started thinking that, I realised you know, that it was too long. And the vocal kicked in. It was a pleasant surprise but then went in the total direction I didn't want it to go. So that's where it, that's where I'm at with that. It's a good song, just not a production I want to hear. All right, I appreciate that, Ian. Thank you very much. Uh, to introduce that track, uh, let's see here. That track is called City of Glass by uh, KST1. KST1, uh, it's always the names that people use when they sign up for websites that throw me for a loop. But, that you know, it's not my choice. They, they make the choice when they sign up, and that's perfectly fine. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, two questions for you as we go into the second round of business here. Number one, of the three tracks you heard, uh, radio, no radio, uh, when I ask you that or when I state that, I mean uh, radio play on uh on MSI radio, of course. So what are your thoughts on that for uh, song number one, two, and three? I'm in a holiday mood, so I'll give them all a plus. Yeah, happy Easter. Lee, what do you uh, think? I, you know, uh, it, it is Easter temporarily, so let's say yes to everybody. But I think yes to everybody because they're interesting tracks. Uh, uh, yeah, play them, of course. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, there was a lot of creativity uh, thrown yeah. into the, the, the sounds and, and productions and stuff. The first track was, you, you know, traditional uh, bluesy and, and, and whatnot. But still, it, you know, it was it was done well. I'm I'm gonna have a harder time trying to figure out which one to be the song of the week. And that's the job you now have laid upon you. So uh, figuring that out, go ahead and uh, do the hard work now, gentlemen. Uh, which song would you like as song of the week? Hmm. I went first last week. All right, I'm sitting on I'll... the fence in the middle of the road here. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll say. Uh, too. Mainly because um, you know the, everyone had their, their, their little problems and whatnot, but um, it was just interestingly done. A little long, but um, yeah, it was it, it was a little bit slick on the production. So you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for a slick production. All right, so we have one vote for number two. Lee, uh, Ian, what do you guys think? Shall I, shall I do one, Ian? Um, go on, of, Lee. Of, the, of my, this being my third go, uh, it's kind of th- third time lucky, third time unlucky. Uh, I, I think they were all really interesting tracks this week, and I'm having a real tough time choosing. Personal taste, I'd say song one, I suppose. I do like blues uh, and that kind of feel. Two was probably the most interesting recording. And three, I, the more I think about it, the more I, I liked it, really. Uh, not just because there's a chap in the chat room about to throw uh, internet darts at me, if I don't say that. Uh, is, is, it, is there such a thing as internet darts? If there's not, we should have an internet darts tournament immediately. Um, virtual darts, I don't know, something like that, anyway. Uh, just trying to work out how that would happen. We'll talk about that again. I'm going to copyright it first. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just, just for the for the roughness of the guitar playing and the performance on the vocal, I'll, I'll go for song one. All right. So we have a split vote between song one and two. Ian, uh, you're the deciding factor or the damning factor, and we'll make our audience select. Go for three. Well, Ian. Go. On. What's, what's the money, boys? How, how much? How much you offering me to go on your side this week? Come on, I'm feeling in, you, a, want, in a nice mood. I want you to go for three. I think there should be. A, we should all have a vote on each song. So they, they were good. They were good numbers. But I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just did. Yeah, I couldn't. I know it sounded like I did, but I didn't. I'm off I, now. In some, in, <laughs> <laughs> in some ways, I do agree. I mean, they all do stand up on their own merits this week, and uh, you know, one was the roughest production, but a very well performed and, and, a, and a good bluesy sort of rootsy track. Uh, number two, as I said, really liked the song. Didn't like the production. But it was well done, if, uh, you know, in, in the same breath. 
And number three, it, it, it was dark and sleazy, and I liked that. Um, just felt that it sort of failed halfway through the track and didn't sort of pick up where it should have been. So I'm kind of, I, I'm in the same position as the rest of the guys. Do you know what? I'm going to go with number two. I think it's the one that sparked most interest in me uh, this week from the point of view of why haven't they done this with this track rather than, you know, this is a really bad track. It's I, I can't criticise it on the way it's been done. And it's just a personal opinion thing that I really don't like in it. So I'm going to go with number two. All right. Well, there you have it then. Uh, song number two, City of Glass by KST1. Going to be our song of the week this week on uh, Music Scene Investigation. Lee, thank you again for being with us. As always, we appreciate you coming on every time you do. Well, th 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 thanks very much. I've, I've had a smashing time again. And uh, I say again, three really great tracks. Really good stuff this week. Yeah, it, it gets tougher and tougher to to select on these tracks, in my opinion. And uh, I don't know how you but guys that's great. do it. Isn't that great, though, that the stuff is, is, is so good that it's hard to decide? You know, that's, yeah. that's the best reason of all. Yeah. Exactly. Like I say, I don't know how you guys do it, but I definitely appreciate the fact that you do do it and uh again thanks for being here ian tom thanks as always and uh to everybody out there in the chat room thank you for being here as well we hope to see you again next week on uh msi on music scene investigation uh we'll have to let you know who the guest is going to be unless ian can pull a rabbit out of his hat well it was meant to be lee Hegarty. Yeah. Hello. He's here tonight. <laughs> uh, due to a few sort of diary woes on both sides, we managed to sort of reschedule to tonight and uh, give Lee his uh, opportunity before next week. Because you're rehearsing next week, aren't you, Lee? I am, although I, I could probably do it if, again if you want me to. Shame of self promotion here. Yeah, this is, uh... That's not what you said on the phone the other week. Well, that's yeah. really useful. Yeah. And you believed got... me. I've got uh, this gig coming up with Florence uh, and the Machine uh, that I can't make that I've got to rehearse really hard for so um, it's, it's, it's a rehearsal for Cool Britannia actually but yeah I, 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 I've got to <laughs> well we'll definitely uh, keep you posted on the website you can head over to musicsceneinvestigation.com to find out who our guest panelist will be next week and I assure you we will have one otherwise Ian will be doing double duty so uh, tune in really? again next. Yeah, you'll be a guest panelist as well. You'll have to wear two hats. So you can use one of your other personalities, Ian. Exactly. I was just saying, I was talking to you about schizophrenia. Fantastic. I've been to do this for years, haven't you? Yeah, there you go. There you have it. So uh, like again, Colin. thanks for being here, everybody. We're going to play out with City of Glass, and uh, we'll talk to you again next time right here on Music Scene Investigation.